let's talk about the domain and range of trigonometric functions because this is very important in finding the limit of trigonometric functions. First, we have the sine and the cosine function. So here, our sine function, sine x, and we already know that the period is 2 pi. For cosine, it's the same, it's 2 pi. The domain or the value permissible to our angle x, let's say our, our variable here is x, are all real numbers. And the range will depend, depend on the amplitude. Again, the range depends on the amplitude. So in this case, the amplitude is 1. Hence, the, the minimum and the maximum value for the range is negative 1 and positive 1. Or from negative 1 to positive 1. Okay, so the range is, by the way, in this scenario, this is not x. This is y. We can consider this one as y because that is our function. Observing the graph, let's use Desmos. First, let's have f of x equals sine of x or the function of sine or sine function. Okay, so observing at this graph, you can see that uh, every, at every value of x, so again, when we try to talk about the values of x, we will look at the horizontal axis, horizontal x-axis. So, at every point at x, say 34, 36, 38, there will always be a point represented in the graph by this value of x. So, for example, uh, for 40, we can see that at this point here, 40, sorry, 40, it's uh, the point represented by 40 is 40, 0 0.745. So, at every value of x, at the x-axis, there will always be a result, okay, a pair of this uh, value of x pertaining to the function. In other words, or in layman's term, uh, there will always be an answer for sine x at every, uh, at any value of x, even if it's negative or positive. Okay, so if you try to think of a number, let's say negative 100, okay, at negative 100, there is an answer. So sine of negative 100 is actually 0. 506 so that 0 0.506 is the value of sine x okay so uh, there is no discontinuity in this function there are no holes okay hence we can say that the domain of sine x is the set of real numbers in terms of the range of this function again the range depends on the amplitude and the amplitude is found at the uh, left side of our function or it's the numerical coefficient of our trigo function so it's actually one that's why our range or the values of y so again when we talk about range it's the values of y it's from the the minimum minimum point or the minimum value sorry is at negative one and the maximum value values of y is at the y axis is positive one so as you can see it's just uh, alternating between negative one and positive one for the maximum and minimum values of uh, y or our range in this term so it's in between negative one the answer is always between negative one and positive one okay so to summarize the domain of sine sine x in this case is the set of real numbers because we have uh, we always have a result at every point of x or every every instances of x and our y the range is from negative one to positive one same for the graph of the cosine function so if you try to observe the graph continuously extends to the left and of course to the right 
And in fact, we don't have any holes or point of discontinuity. Okay, so for example, uh, if we have the value of x being equal to, let's say, 20. Okay, so if we trace 20, we can see that there is a point that represents 20 here, which is 20 and 0. Uh, the point is 20, 0 0.408. So, at any value of x, there is a point that we can always see. Or in other words, for any value of x, there will always be a result for this function f of x or y. Okay, so there's always a pair of x and y. Okay, and now let's go back to the origin, point of origin, 0, 0. Okay, so at the origin, this is our cosine function. If you try to observe, there is somehow a similarity between, or some similarities between sine and cosine function. Okay, so let's have our sign be green. Okay, so if you try to look at the green graph, which is our sign, and the red graph, which is the cosine function, they actually, their patterns, their patterns, actually look the same okay so the reason why they are actually the same or not really the same but looks the same is it's because uh these two functions are what is uh shifted okay from one another so when we talk about shifting it's move for example the cosine function if the cosine function is this the sign is shifted to the right Okay, the graph of the sign is just shifted to the right. And also vice versa. Okay, so if the sine function is here, then the cosine function is just shifted to the left. Okay, in other words, we can say that the domain, so let's try to erase the sine function. The domain of the cosine function is just the set of real numbers. Okay, so why the set of real numbers? It's because... Again, at any value of x, we will always have an ordered pair of x, y. There's always an answer for this function. Okay. However, for the range, it's also the same with the sine function. The maximum point is 1. The minimum point is negative 1. So, y, okay, y is, sorry, it's in between. So, negative 1 in between positive 1 and negative 1. Okay, so this is the range of our function, cosine of x, and this is the domain of our cosine function. Next, we have tangent of x. Okay, so for the tangent of x, we can observe that the period is pi. Okay, so it means that the uh, graph of the tangent function repeats faster compared to the sine and cosine function okay so when we talk about faster it means that the not, not, not the lot of that's the speed but rather uh, compared to the sine and cosine function the tangent function repeats itself in, a, in the shortest possible value okay so at pi the tangent will repeat again after pi okay then after what's after pi so plus pi it will be 2 pi so there are already two patterns of tangent within 2 pi unlike for sine and cosine it is only one pattern at 2 pi and in fact half pattern for pi okay so the period is just pi now uh, going to the domain so x the domain should not include the values the values of x which contains the odd multiple of pi over 2 okay again uh, in simple words this just this just means that as long as it does not contain the odd multiple of pi over 2 the important uh, concept here is pi over 2 and odd here because 2n plus 1 is always odd Okay, so if n is 0, it's 1. 1 is odd. If n is 2, uh, 
uh, if n is 1, it's 3. Okay, so we have 3 pi over 2. Five, uh, if, if n is 2, 5 pi over 2. So as long as the values of x is not pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, uh, 5 pi over 2. So again, add. Let's say 7 pi over 2. 7 is also add. As long as the values of x are not these values, okay, tangent function, uh, there is a representation or there is a value for the tangent function, okay? In terms of range, uh, it's all real numbers. So unlike the sine and cosine, it's bounded by its amplitude. Tangent does not have an amplitude, does not have a maximum or minimum value okay so it just goes on uh, to infinity positive infinity and negative infinity in terms of the y-axis again for the values of y for the value of the function it's all real numbers however the domain should not contain the odd multiples of pi over 2 let's try to observe the graph of the tangent function so we have f of x equals tangent of x okay so this is the graph of our tangent function and if you try to observe it's not like the sine the graph of the sine and the cosine function so there is actually sep uh, there are actually many separated graphs here okay so in other words the graph of the tangent function is disjointed okay so why is it disjointed uh, because if you try to remember the domain of the tangent function does not include the values of x where the values is or are odd multiples of pi over 2. So, for example, let's have x equals uh, first, uh, very familiar, we have pi over 2. Okay. Uh, let's change the... Okay, let's make it the broken line. Okay, so that's one of the values where our graph does not uh, does not cross or intersect and in fact it just gets closer and closer to this line here again this is represented by pi over 2 which is 1.57 something okay so it gets closer to this line here but it will never touch it so uh, in reality this value here the line formed by x equals pi over 2 becomes the boundary of a recurrence pattern or a pattern uh, if you try to observe the pattern it somehow looks like uh, what they call this a stretch s okay we can say it's a stretch s and in fact the uh, what do we call this the add multiples of pi over 2 becomes the boundary of it okay sorry it's equal equal uh, for example, this green line here, again, that's the boundary of the pattern, okay? So, if you can remember this line, we have a name for it. We call this one as a vertical asymptote, okay? It's because the graph, the graph of the tangent, the red graph, uh, does not cross or touch this line because there is no value of tangent for pi over 2 and in fact if you try to uh, use your calculators tangent pi over 2 it will just give you math error the the value of the tangent function is just undefined okay so what does it imply so we can generalize that the domain again does not so there is no multiple add multiple okay add multiple multiples of pi over 2 or we have the symbolic <coughs> uh, uh, pattern or we have 2n 
for 2n plus 1. So why 2n plus 1? It's because 2n plus 1 is odd. If you have 2n, 2n is even. And if you add 1 to 2n, it becomes odd. Okay, so 2n plus 1 uh, over 2. And then we have this pi here. Okay, so pi over 2. The, the important part here is pi over 2. That's the domain. We don't include the odd multiples of pi over 2. While for the range, we have the set of real numbers. So why I'm why I'm sure that it's the set of real numbers because looking at our y-axis and tracing it to our graph here, we are sure that there is always a value of uh, y. And in fact, for for one. Okay, so for this pattern here, we have infinite values. It keeps on extending. Okay, from the positive and negative infinity to the to, to the positive and negative infinity. So that's it.